Hi, this is Steve Bartlett, and I'm excited to be with you once again to just study evangelism. Hopefully you're able to pick up one of our manuals. Um, this is just such a great study today. The one I'm going to share with you, The Word Became Flesh, I believe is absolutely foundational to understanding what evangelism is all about. When I first got born again back in 1982, Nothing would have scared me more than going out and trying to share my faith with someone. But when I realized that it was not me on my own, but that it was Jesus living in me that was going with me to go out and share my faith, it became very easy. Now this study, I think, again, is one of the greatest ones that I've ever come across, that I've ever written. I want to read a couple of passages of Scripture to you. And it says here in John 1, 14 through 18, that this whole passage about the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Do you realize that there was a time when the Word was not here on earth, and that all people really had was religion to look to. In this case, Judaism or some of the other religions in the world. But in a moment in time, the Word of God put on flesh and blood. God came down here to this earth. Now, let me read this to you. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is at the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. When you saw Jesus, or see Jesus walking down the road, and we, we read this in the Gospels, you actually see what God Almighty is like. If God were here on this planet, what would God be doing? Well, the very things Jesus did. We'll come to that in just a minute. Again, the Word became flesh. God put on human form. And I want to tell you something. God wants to do it again. And He wants to do it through you. Let me finish this. Hebrews 1.3 The Bible says, Who being the very brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, when you look at Jesus, when you study the gospel and you get a glimpse at Jesus, what you're seeing is God Almighty. And this is who God is. It's how he thinks. It's what he values. It's what God would do if God were here on earth. Everything that Jesus did is a revelation of God's heart and God's purpose. The Bible says in Colossians 1.15 that he is the image of the invisible God. Again, if you look at this guy, if you look at Christ, you look at Jesus, you're going to see who God is and what God is actually like. Now, now help me understand this. Before Jesus, where did you find God? Where would you go to find God? Let, let's say I'm living at, at that time in, in first century Palestine. And I go up to someone and I say, hey, how do I find God? You know what they would have told you? God is, is in a scroll. He's in a, a temple or a synagogue, some holy building. And he's in Israel. You've got to go to Israel. You're never going to find God. And the truth is, the kind of God you would find is a God who the religious crowd taught that God is upset with everyone that's not, quote-unquote, perfectly holy or perfectly righteous. You know what Jesus did? Jesus took God out of the scroll, out of the building, and out of Israel, and brought him into just normal daily living. You know, there was a very interesting question that the Pharisees asked Jesus there in Luke chapter 5. And again, if you look on your outline on page 11, you'll see this, where, where Jesus finds Matthew or Levi, and he says, hey, come and follow me. And he gets up, and he rises up and follows after him. 
and he gave him, I gave him a great feast at his house. And there was a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And listen to what the scribes ask. Why do you eat and drink with sinners? Why would you even spend any time with these people? See, this is the word that's become flesh now. It's not, it's not Jewish religion and Jewish legalism. They don't have a clue who God is. This is the word. God Almighty, in human form, what's he doing with a bunch of tax collectors and sinners and, and harlots and, and all the people that the good people of the day hate and dislike? And you know what Jesus says? I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What did the word come to do but restore lost humanity to his father, to his God? What was God's heart? What was God's desire for those people? To judge them? To put them down? To send them to hell? Or was it God's purpose and his desire in his heart to see them restored to him? You know, that question, though, just sort of reverberates in my mind and in my heart. Why would you even eat with them? I'll tell you why. You see, for the, for the, Pharisees for the religious crowd, what they're really saying is, what possible value do any of these losers have? And Jesus' statement is so simple. These are the people God sent me to reach. But we need to be very careful that we don't become Pharisees ourselves. Now listen to this statement. When the Word became flesh, what was really happening is that Jesus was taking God public. Jesus was taking God out of the synagogue, out of the scroll, out of the book. You know, it's amazing to me. If I were to ask the average person here in North America right now, and this is the year 2017, where do I go to find God? What do you think most people are going to tell me? You need to go to church. You're going to hear some preacher tell you words out of a book. And if you go to the altar and kneel or pray or whatever it is, this is where you find God. I wonder how much real progress we've had in 2,000 years. You ever think about that? Jesus takes God and takes him public. He's no longer in a book or in a scroll or in a synagogue or a temple. He's out touching people. In Mark chapter 1, it's one of my favorite stories in the entire Bible. And you'll see this on page 12 of your outline. A leper comes to Jesus and he implores him. He beseeches him. He, he literally begs him, kneeling down to him and saying, If you're willing, you could make me clean. It's an amazing statement. If you wanted to, you have the power to heal my body. He is eaten up with leprosy. His fingers are probably eaten up, ears, eyes, whatever, nose, it, 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 his eyelids. It's all eaten up with leprosy. This leper's heard about Jesus and he's heard about his power and he knows that the miracle working power of God is on this man. And yet, what does the leper say? I know you have the power, Jesus, but I don't know if you care about someone like me. I wonder where that leper got that conception of God. He's probably been hanging around with some of the Jews in the temple or in the synagogue. I know he can't go in there, but my point is, they used to teach that if you have leprosy, you're cursed of God. So what does this leper think? I know you could heal me, but am I under the curse of God? Did God do this to me? Think about this for a minute. Jesus is taking God public. He's taking him out of religion. You know what you and I are charged by God to do? You know what evangelism is, guys? It's taking God out of religion, taking God out of just a book that, that most of the world thinks is a 2,000-year-old book and has no real impact in my life today. And it's bringing Jesus into the here and the now. And that's what evangelism is all about. Remember what Jesus says to the leper? 
It says Jesus was moved with compassion and he stretched forth his hand and he touched him and he said to him, I am willing. I want to be clean. Again, I, I share this story because I want you to understand Jesus is taking God public. You know what you and I are charged with by God to do? Take him public once again. Do you know how many miracles I've seen on the streets? I mean, blind eyes opening. Just in the DR this year, there was a person that was crippled and couldn't walk that got up and walked. Deaf ears, hearing, instant answers to prayer. I've seen devil possessed people set this, I mean, set free like that in a minute, in an instant, by the power of the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, God isn't in some holy temple somewhere. You know where God is? He's right here with us in the park, on the street. I've seen God do so many instant and miraculous things. And I've, I've probably seen more of them out on the streets than I have in the church. Because that's what God wants us to do. Can you think of this for a minute? Let me just give you a thought. How many of Jesus' great sermons did he preach inside a building? inside a temple or a synagogue? Where did he teach the Sermon on the Mount? Oh, wait a minute, I just gave it away on a mountainside. How about the Olivet Discourse? Oh, wait a minute, it was in the garden. Hey, listen, I, I think about this for a minute, or the Mount of Olivet. What I want you to get is this, guys. Jesus' whole ministry was out where the people are. The essence of evangelism is not hiding in a church building but it's taking God public out where the needs are, out where the people are. Could you imagine they asked, you know, what did Jesus do today? You wouldn't believe it. He forgave an adulteress when the religious leaders want to stone her. He's loving rejects like Zacchaeus. Could you imagine that? You know what everybody saw that day? Uh, uh, a turncoat, in other words, a traitor, tax collector who's been ripping everybody off. Remember what Jesus said about Zacchaeus? He too is a son of Abraham. Jesus saw Zacchaeus' potential when everybody else only saw their enemy. Again, Jesus took God public. Jesus reached out with God's love and God's grace to a hurting humanity. Listen to this. He's caring about centurion servants. He's spending days in Samaria. He's setting the demon-possessed free, and he's healing the sick. He's, this is unbelievable. He's putting tax collectors into the ministry. Isn't that what he did in Matthew 9, 9, when he calls Matthew to come off of that tax collector's booth and to come and serve him? Why do I share this with you? Because I believe the word wants to become flesh again. And in fact, I'm about to read to you more than a dozen verses of Scripture that if you're not careful, it's going to blow your mind. You're almost not going to know how to handle it because it's exactly opposite of what we were taught in so many churches. Listen to this. John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive, because it doesn't see him or knows him. But you know him. For, listen to this, he lives or dwells with you and shall be in you. Jesus is prophesying of what's going to happen when the Holy Spirit comes to indwell and to infill the believers. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you and in you. Listen to what he follows that up with in John 14, 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. How is it that God is going to manifest himself to us? But by a real encounter of the Holy Spirit himself. Obviously, it's through the Word of God. God's going to renew our minds and our natures and everything about us. But there's going to come a divine encounter 
where we literally meet the living God. Listen to 1 Corinthians 12, 27. <clears throat> the Bible says, now you're the body of Christ and members individually. The word is becoming flesh once again. You who were not a people are now the body of Christ. Christ needs a body. Can I share with you a revelation that will blow your mind? God is a spirit. He needs your flesh. Think of that, guys. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Listen to this. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Now, if the Word became flesh, what do you call that the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Word is wanting to become flesh once again. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you and whom you have from God. You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. 2 Corinthians 6, and again, you see all these on your, on your outline here. This is page 15. God says, I will dwell in them, and I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Where is God walking today, guys? Spirit-filled believers. The Word is wanting to take on flesh and blood once again. And don't worry, I'm not off on some weird trip thinking I'm Jesus. I just want you to know God's purpose is to live in his people. That's you and me. What the word did in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, the spirit of God wants to do in each of us today. And that is to fill us and to empower us and to use us to be his, his eyes, his mouth, and his hands, to reach out to a lost and a dying world. Again, God is a spirit, and he's looking for someone that will yield themselves to the living God. You could be that person if you choose to be. Listen to this in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, where the Bible says that Jesus Christ is in you. Think of that for a minute. Ephesians 2.22, you are being dwelt, built together for a dwelling place of God by the Spirit. You're being built together for God to live in you. See, I'm going to teach you all kinds of principles on evangelism. But until you settle a couple things, number one, God has been reaching out to the human race for 6,000 years. Don't tell me about some God of the Old Testament that doesn't love humanity. I'm not buying it. He was never just the God of the Jews. He was always reaching out to the entire human race. And number two, God isn't sending you out to do something that you can't do. He's in you and with you, and His Spirit lives on the inside of you, and He's waiting for people that He can manifest His gifts Man, I had a great weekend, or just a weekend or so ago, we went out on Good Friday. God gave me a word of knowledge for someone. And what do you think happened? He got born again right there on the street. Is that surprising? Is that an amazing thing, that the Spirit of God would live within us? Isn't that the entire purpose of Jesus going to the cross? Not just to purchase our sins, and that one day we'll get to go to heaven. Have you ever thought about what God got out of redemption? Most of us concentrate on what we get out of redemption. Do you know why God has completely and thoroughly washed you with his blood? To where now you're the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? And so he has the legal right to live within you and manifest himself through you to a lost and dying world. Almighty God and all of his holiness and all of his awesomeness is looking for men and women that he can live in and that he can work through. The word became flesh and the word is becoming flesh and blood once again through our lives. I'm not done yet. It just keeps going. Listen to this. We are members of his body and of his flesh, 
and of his bones. <clears throat> it says that if we'll know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, we could be filled with all the fullness of God. That passage in Ephesians 3.19 could be the most radical passage of Scripture in all of the Bible. Because the bottom line is, God is looking for a place that he can fill with all of his fullness. It's not like I got Holy Spirit B when, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you kidding? I have the same Holy Spirit living in me that Jesus Christ did when he was here on the earth. And the bottom line is, we now have been made his representatives here in this world. We are supernatural men and women of God, indwelt by God, where the Spirit of God has come to live within us. And I'm telling you right now, God wants you to enjoy the fullness of what it means to be filled with your Spirit. And here's a question that I have for you. <clears throat> How does God go to jail today? How does God go in and reach out to someone on the streets? How does God embrace an addict? How does God heal the sick? How does he save a lost soul? He does it through his body. <clears throat> How does he heal someone hurting and discouraged and depressed? How does he reach out to a runaway today? See, the Word is looking for flesh that it can inhabit. The Word is looking for people that, that he can fill with his fullness. Hey, God, if you give me the phone keeps ringing, what can I say? How does God win the lost? He does it through me and you. This is God's purpose. This is God's design. And if you and I would embrace what it means to be a New Testament Christian, we wouldn't just talk about how it was awesome for what the apostles did 2,000 years ago. We'd begin to live our own stories right here, right now. It's amazing this year, I've already been on four mission trips, and I've seen people saved in all kinds of different parts of the world. We're getting ready to go to Africa. I'm getting ready to go to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm getting ready to go to Uganda. We're going to go to Costa Rica. I'm going to go to Beirut this year. And you realize that the same God who lived on the inside of the apostles now lives on the inside of us. And the word that became flesh in Jesus' time is now the Spirit of God living on the inside of us, where we become supernatural men and women of God. And I want to encourage you to embrace your destiny as a spirit-filled man or woman of God. Don't let the enemy rip you off and somehow put you into, you know, thinking of, I can't do anything great. I'm just little old me. Well, why don't you change and become a supernatural, spirit-filled man or woman of God with apostolic power and authority? You know, Jesus gave you his name so that you could use it to make a difference in this world. Let, let him take on flesh and blood once again. And you'll be someone who absolutely changes this world. Listen to what John the Baptist said about Jesus in prophesying about this baptism of the Holy Spirit. John said, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I comes, whose sandal I'm not even worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You know, I love that passage because there's three times in the Word of God where God lights on fire what he intends to inhabit. He did it at the tabernacle, he did it at the temple, and he did it on the day of Pentecost. Cloven tongues as of fire sat on every one of them. God wants to light you on fire with his power and his spirit. And again, if you'll just embrace New Testament Christianity. Listen, don't settle for dead religion when what God is looking for is spirit-filled, supernatural men and women of God. That the word once again could take on flesh and blood and find expression in this world. 
Who is Jesus going to love through if it's not us? Who is Jesus going to move through if it's not us? In Luke 24, listen to this. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Christianity is about power, not just words, but the very power of Almighty God. And let me give you Acts 1.8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. And again, on the day of Pentecost, what does it say? They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen, guys, it's not about just talking in tongues. It's about being filled with the life and power of God. Can I tell you this? In, in my experience here on earth, I've seen two versions of Christianity. Those that, that literally spend their entire lives talking about a book, talking about events that happened 2,000 years ago, and then those that are living it today, that have their own stories and their own testimonies, their own miraculous occurrences where the Spirit of God moved in their lives. Can I tell you what? God is a Spirit. He needs your flesh. And if you yield yourself to Him, you will become a channel of blessing in this world. Listen, I'm finished with our lesson today, but I want you to know something. I'm going to begin in this next one, in lesson number three, to actually talk about how to share your faith, how to do evangelism. These two lessons for me are so foundational, I wanted just to start with them. Remember this, God has always reached out to the entire human race. And number two, real Christianity is God living on the inside of you. It's not just a matter of beliefs and do's and don'ts and legalistic stuff and things we have to do to somehow please God. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ did all of that for us on the cross. He bore our sins. He bore our failures. Today, we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And He made us that way, that He could come and fill us and give us new life. Listen, it's been great to be with you today. God bless you. If you haven't got the manual, simply send us an email, give us a call, let us know how we can better serve you. May God bless you as you purpose in your heart to win the loss. Father, I just pray for my brothers and sisters. Give them your heart for lost souls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.